In this episode of Motive Garage, presented by Spares Box, we install a Golby's Parts Turbo Kit into our GR Yaris so we can make some more power. Well, it's time to work on the Yaris again. We're back at Impossible Fab with Grub. Hi, Grub. Hey, what's going on? It's time to step things up with our Yaris. Yeah. We have laid claim to being the quickest Yaris in the world down the quarter mile with an actual validated time slip. Yep. So far, no one has actually beaten us with that. Step up to the challenge if you want. The car is probably quicker now, but due to lockdown, we haven't been back to the track to try and run an 11.9 on a stock turbo. I'm pretty confident that it could do it. Yeah. But coulda, woulda, shoulda, whatever. Yep. Who cares? Yeah. But Ikanu has... I, I guess the most powerful one yep. on the on the dyno, but every dyno is so different. What, what's his power? He's made over 400. Okay. Right. Um, so rather than wait for tracks to open and all that sort of stuff and try and run an 11 on a stock turbo, let's just upgrade the turbo grub. Let's do it. I've made your life really easy though. Yep. Golby's Parts in yep. Queensland have developed a complete turbo kit. Okay. It's already been test fitted to their car yep. and basically they've sent it to us. Yep. And now we're going to actually test how all the okay, things work. Great. So. Uh, Let's cut to a montage yep. and look at the entire turbo kit. Yeah, right. Let's go. Golby's parts not only stock a huge array of GR Yaris performance parts, but also have developed some of their own, including exhaust and intercooler piping kits. Their turbo kit was designed, fabricated and test fit in-house and is a comprehensive bolt-on turbo kit that doesn't stand out in the engine bay with pretty much stock appearance, meaning it's suitable for both street and race applications. Even better for us, the kit uses products from our existing trusted partners, Garrett Advancing Motion, Turbo Smart, and Six Boost. The Turbo is a G25 550 with a non-wastegated 0.9 rear housing. The modern aerodynamics means it should help us go well past 300 kilowatts or 400 horsepower at the hubs without sacrificing too much drivability, response, or lowdown torque. Six Boost developed the steam pipe manifold with merge collector and external wastegate, on which sits a TurboSmart 45mm external wastegate. The kit also comes with revised hot side intercooler pipe, as well as a new cold side intercooler pipe section with an attachment for the TurboSmart blow off valve, as the Yaris normally runs an electronically controlled item built into the compressor cover of the stock turbo. There is a new 3 inch dump pipe and wastegate pipe which plums back, and there is a new larger intake which attaches to an all-type fab intake kit that might look like their normal one, but is much larger and has the airflow meter section removed. There is water and oil lines for the turbo. There's fittings, bolts, adapters, and plenty of heat shielding and wrap. Like we said, an incredibly comprehensive kit. What do you think of the turbo kit? Wow, that's really impressive. It's very, very comprehensive, right? Yeah. Like it's... Well, like from fitting the intercooler pipes from Golby's before, I'm really excited to actually fit this kit. It looks very comprehensive. It looks like it's going to fit really easily, so let's get into it, eh? Oh, I think we need a slight plan of attack. Okay. Um, subframe off. Yep. Old turbo stuff off. Yep. New turbo stuff in. Yep. Oh, how good's that? Let's go. It's a day job. Oh, hang on, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Cut to a montage. Cut to the montage. Go.
Now, we are the very first people to fit up a GR Yaris turbo kit from Golby's Parts. Now, obviously, they did all the fabrication and test fitting and development on their own Yaris, as well as their jig. And there's no instructions yet, and they wanted us to be the first people to install it and look for any small issues and also look at any procedure that you should follow to install it into your Yaris. Now, we basically spent all of day one doing the trial fit before we now spend day two essentially fitting it correctly. Directly. So based on what we learnt yesterday, I've got some advice for anyone that wants to fit this kit on what procedure you should do it. Firstly, remove obviously all the stuff in the engine bay you need to first, which is all of the intake and airbox. Uh, you can leave the front intercooler pipe on and the front bumper. Uh, then when you jack the car up, you have to take out the subframe to make your life easier. Some people might say you can do it without it, but honestly, just remove the subframe. It's worth it to then have to do a wheel alignment later. Uh, you also need to remove the driver's side drive shaft and the bracket for it as well. And you also need to remove a bracket that holds the two heater hoses that's at the top of the engine on the passenger side. Once you've removed all of those and removed the factory turbocharger, it's actually pretty straightforward. So the steps that we recommend to install the turbo kit is, you need to install the heat shield for the exhaust manifold off the car. And then what you want to do is you want to hammer the edges down so that you can still get to all the bolt holes and then you want to install the manifold and the heat shield together and you can fully install the exhaust manifold straight up. The next step that you want to do is you want to put the wastegate on, the turbocharger on, but leave the turbocharger loose on both the rear housing and the front housing. And then you want to put on the dump pipe, the mid pipe and the screamer pipe from the wastegate or the plumb back pipe from the wastegate. And that way you can orientate the rear of the turbo correctly first then you, what you want to do is you want to align the cartridge so that you can create your turbo drain next. And then once you've done that, then you want to put your intercooler pipe on. Once you've then basically dummy fit everything loose, then you nip up everything on the turbo as best you can so that it stays in the correct position. Once you've nipped all that up, pull it all out of the car again. Once you've pulled it all out of the car, you can nip up all the bolts on the turbo exactly where you need them to be, and then you can install all of the lines onto the turbocharger, basically the water inlet, outlet, and the oil feed. Tighten those up ready to go back in as well. And when you do the oil drain, our recommendation is when you remove the turbo back out to then nip everything up, is actually leave the drain attached and undo the actual bulkhead onto the block, the two little bolts for that, and leave that on the turbocharger. Because trying to fit that in is going to be really difficult with everything attached uh, to the block itself. So essentially that's where we're at. We're about to pull the turbo back out, tighten everything up, and basically do the final installation. So uh, like anything, once you've done it once, it's pretty easy. If we did this again, we could do it all in a day with two people. Yeah, it's a really good kit. Fitment so far has been fantastic. Uh, now it's just finessing the instructions and a couple of little, basically there's a couple of bolts missing from the kit which they'll now add to it, which is great. But overall, fantastic. Let's get it finished. Now before I put the TurboSmart wastegate in for the final time, I need to prepare it for what I want it to do. Now I have a bit of a rule of thumb when it comes to boost control, especially with a three port boost controller, which is your normal or usual sort of boost controller. You want your wastegate pressure to be a minimum of half of what your target boost is gonna be. Now, I know we're gonna run at least 30 PSI peak, potentially even 32, 33 PSI, so I need to be at least 16, 17 PSI as a minimum. You can go higher if you like, but you need to juggle your minimum based on what you want your minimum boost to be. So, I think that roughly, I'd like my minimum boost to be 19, 20 PSI, and my maximum to be, you know, 32, 33, which basically means I want 19 or 20 PSI of wastegate spring. Now, it comes with a 14 PSI spring. In the pack is a five PSI spring option and a seven PSI. I'm gonna add the five, 14 plus five, is a 19 PSI wastegate spring. Uh, so we'll get it on the vise, we'll get that in, we'll get some fittings on this thing and get the TurboSmart 45mm gate into the car. So we've pulled the Yaris Turbo apart and we've got our G25 550 Turbo apart so we can have a proper direct comparison between the two turbos. The first thing that you're gonna ask is what is the size difference? Well, let's look at the compressor first. So the GR Yaris is 42 millimeters on the inducer versus 48 millimeters on the inducer on the compressor for the G25 550. So six mil difference. 
Uh, and on the X juicer side, 54 millimetres versus 60 millimetres, so six millimetres bigger. So there is a decent size difference in the compressor wheel, but it's not just about the size of the compressor wheel, it's also about the design and the weight. So the G25 550 is obviously a billet wheel. It is a nine blade billet wheel, while the Yaris one actually has six main blades and then six intermediate half blades in between. Um, can this flow more air? Well, logic would say that it can and can probably spin faster and has better aerodynamics. So we know that we've got 550 horsepower with the flow on the compressor side, uh, so we should have more flow than what we do with the factory turbo by a decent margin, but it's the back side that also determines how much power you can make as well. So let's flip her around. Yaris turbo. 50 millimetres on the inducer versus 54 millimetres on the inducer for the G25 550. And then on the exducer, oh, call it 43 to round up slightly, 43 millimetres versus 49 millimetres. So, and with the blade count, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, if you look at the blade design, it is different. These are curved more to probably be more responsive and catch more air. The G25 is a little bit more open to flow a little bit more. So we've got a decent difference in physical size on the turbine wheel, which was probably the biggest problem the Yaris had, is the compressor was capable of more flow, uh, which you can tell by obviously all that grunt down low, uh, but then it just, the turbine housing was choking it up top. So in terms of wheel size, there is a, f a significant difference in wheel size, uh, but not so much that we should lose too much response. So that's the turbo comparison. Let's have a look at the manifold and dump pipe, etc., and look at some other size comparisons. Now, as you know, the smallest point pretty much matches the smallest point on the turbine wheel, which is the exducer. So you're talking 40 millimetres in here, uh, and then you're talking 49 millimetres uh, on the G25 550. So there is nine millimetres more diameter I guess for that final piece of flow figure, which is the overall diameter of the actual outlet coming out of the turbocharger. Uh, if you want to compare the exhaust manifold, this is integrated and you can see the three join very quickly. So the, the exhaust gas flow has a very sharp turn coming out of the uh, number one and number three, joins into number two, gets quite turbulent and it's very short to get to quite a thin uh, section as it goes into the turbocharger. We grab the six boost one, has a full size merge collector, uh, a well designed merge collector inside so you can see the flow will be a lot better. It isn't equal length, number three is shorter but you can see by the longer one and two runner the way that they merge will be a lot smoother so there'll be less back pressure especially when we're trying to push this thing, uh, it will flow a lot nicer through there and obviously this has an external wastegate attachment. So let's take a look at the wastegate as well. Obviously the Yaris has an internal wastegate and we are talking the overall opening. We're talking 27, 28 millimetres for the opening uh, versus our wastegate over here, which is a 45 millimetre wastegate. And the opening for the gate, 38 millimetres for the actual physical opening of the exhaust manifold runner. So. 38 mil worth of uh, runner size and then a 45 mil gate versus 27 millimetres. So we've got 11 millimetres as a minimum more flow when it comes to the diameter of the wastegate opening. So why does flowing more wastegate gas matter? Well, if you can imagine, if you've already got a restriction from the turbine wheel and you're opening the gate to try and let some extra exhaust gas pass it because the compressor is still making more power, if you can let more gas pass, you potentially may be able to squeeze a little bit more power out of it. So a bigger turbine wheel, bigger turbine housing, better flowing exhaust manifold and a bigger wastegate means that the exhaust side should allow the extra grunt that this compressor wheel on the G25 can provide. So uh, yeah, pretty interesting analysing this in, in full and seeing exactly the difference. So the G25 overall, it isn't wildly bigger than what we have, but certainly bigger better design and hopefully we shouldn't lose too much response but be able to pick up a good solid 70 to 100 horsepower extra using it. Let's find out. There we go. Turbo is ready to go on.
luckily we already had a Goldmiss intercooler piping kit, so we literally removed this bit and replaced it with this bit that has the bowl valve. Well, the Golby's Parts Turbo Kit is now installed into our GR Yaris. I've taken it for a couple of drives already to make sure nothing leaks and it all works okay, etc. And so far, so good. The kit fits perfectly. There is no drama to the way it runs. Nothing rubs, squeaks, burns, or does anything wrong. And it's been fantastic. Now, I'd love to give you some driving impressions, but with the car set on wastegate pressure, obviously it opens a bit slowly. Uh, and we haven't tuned the car to specifically suit this exhaust manifold or add timing based on any restriction that we now no longer have in the rear housing, etc. So we're going to save the driving impressions till after Powertune have installed the larger injectors and tuned the car. As soon as it's tuned, goes without saying, we're going straight to the track, both the drag strip and see if we can read the first 10 second Yaris in the world. And then we're going to head back to Wakefield and get our lap record back. And after that, we're heading to Bathurst, thanks to Spares Box as part of Challenge Bathurst. So uh, it's a lot about to happen with our little GI Yaris.